Going through, uh, I think it was your Twitter, you, you tweeted earlier this month, imagine if that happened, if Twitter was around when that play had happened. Like, what do you think <laughs> the reaction would have been, aside from totally measured by, by everyone? Uh, there would have been a lot of mad people from Anaheim, a lot of happy people in Chicago, and uh, as someone that's new to Twitter, it's a whole new universe out there, and uh, it's kind of scary, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, let me tell you, you got in at the right time. It's so nice and peaceful now. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, compared <laughs> to how it was back in the day. You know, I was looking at, the, man, 2005, like, I, you know, it's such a cliche thing, but it's like, man, that was 18 years ago that, that just dawned on me. And obviously, you know, a ton of stuff you remember from then, but when you see uh, plays like that, and you talk about 2005, like, what are the memories that, that come back the clearest and the fullest to you? Uh, for opening day here, yeah. one nothing win. Uh, there was an at-bat that Paul Canerco had. I was hitting behind him. We had a leadoff double, and he does everything in his power to get the guy to third. He gets jammed, hits a little weak ground ball to second. Uh, and then I was able to drive him in, and we were up one nothing, I believe. And I, I think that was the one thing. We're like, man, this guy is our middle of our order guy, and he's giving up his, his at bat to get him over. And we end up winning one nothing. Uh, plus, it was the opener. It was home. Everything. Everyone was kind of, well, how's this team going to be? We go out and win. And then, just the plays in the playoffs are rem you me you remember them? Yeah. But a lot of times you have to think about them because it happened so fast. It was a blur. When you're in it, it's a blur. So, so opening day was the day where you thought like there was something special about the yeah, team. Were, well, there any, were there any signs to you like during spring training when you were when the guys were starting to coalesce that you thought? I remember the first play of spring training. There was a fly ball in the left field line. Scott Pesednik was playing left, and he dives and catches it. And normally in spring training, guys kind of eh, let's let this one. Yeah. He dives and catches it, and you could tell. I was like, man, okay, this might be a little fun. And then we just had a really good spring. Guys were coming together. Guys were around each other. We really liked each other. So it kind of started then and then opening day and then things just built and built and built. And then you get into the postseason, and we honestly felt like there was no team out there that could beat us, and that's a special feeling. You talk about – it's always an interesting thing when you talk about chemistry with the team and guys Guys liked each other. And it's one of those things where it's, it's almost it's lightning in a bottle, right? Like you can do your best as an executive to try and get players that you think will match up. But there, there's – is there a science to it, or is that you just no. make your best bet? In it? Well, winning, yeah. if you're winning, you like everybody. If you're losing, yeah. you hate everybody. So uh, it helped that we won a lot of games that year. And it wasn't always happy, hunky-dory. I mean, there was arguments and fights. We could get over it. We could have man-to-man -man yeah. talks and say, hey, listen, I don't like this about you, and let's figure it out. And we did. And uh, that's what made it. The problem is when you run into teams that you can't get over it, and guys can't get over things, and, and they let it fester. Instead, that team it was open. It was open book. Like, hey, I got a problem with you. We're going to go in here. We're going to talk it out. We're going to fight, or we're going to, and then we're going to hug afterwards, and we're going to move on. And that was what made that team so great. Was that everybody was accountable for their actions. Everybody was okay with being criticized, and they were able to move on from it. You're, you're doing the, the TV work now, and you got the podcast. So you're still involved with the game. I mean, obviously, there's there's nothing like playing the game, right? But uh, does it scratch any kind of itch for you doing what you're doing now? Uh, playing is the best. Yeah, I, you're step. It's it's competition, right? You're stepping into the box. You're stepping. You're facing the pitcher. You're saying, okay, this is me against you. Uh, and then even catching, you're trying to get the guy out. You're trying to figure out what he's thinking or what your pitcher's thinking, what I think. So there's definitely a difference. Uh, but I'm so happy that with Fox, I'm able to go in and do these games on Saturday because I get to see the guys. I get to still talk. I'm still a part of it, right? And then with the podcast thing, I, we have a million great guests on, so I'm still learning about every team, uh, whether we had Lance Lynn on with the White Sox, and he gives he gave us some great sound bites about wanting to close in the WBC, which caused a little bit of a stir. And, and you just get these guys on, you get to hear what they're thinking. So it's so nice to hear that what players are thinking and to hear their stories as opposed to the same five questions over and over again. Let's talk about this. we got a little time left to talk about this this current White Sox team. And, you know, last year, it, so much of it was health. The talent was there. The talent was there from the year before, but guys couldn't stay healthy. As we get into this season, do you see that as still being the number one issue? Are there any holes that you still see need to be filled or questions you have about this team? Or is it a matter of they got the personnel. If everybody can stay healthy and play the way they can, they'll be all right. I think they're going to be fine. Health. I don't know if there's a lot of depth. I think that's the key. Is can they stay healthy? And you saw that the last last year when Moncada goes down, Eloy goes down, Robert goes down, uh, Grandal goes down. I, I think that's the big thing. Some of the pitchers go down. Uh, the bullpen needs to stabilize a little bit. They had some some ups and downs in Houston. I think the starters are going to be really good. 
I think the bullpen will get there. I think this lineup has a chance to be very dynamic. They have power, they have speed, they can do a lot of things. The defense looked much improved the first four games, especially in the outfield. Uh, so I think they have a chance. I, I picked them to win over 83 and a half, I think was the line. So I picked them, so I don't, you know, don't let me down. Yeah. Uh, but I think they have a chance, honestly, to be right there until the end and have a chance to, to get into the postseason and be dangerous. All right. AJ Brzezinski, thanks uh, for your time. Good catching up with you. Enjoy opening day. Thanks. I can't wait. And hopefully I don't bounce that first pitch. All right. Back to you guys.